So the other day, someone left a comment asking about what the difference is between an old world and a new world rat snake. And that's actually a pretty good question. And in addition to that, it's also an excuse to make some easy and free content. So I'm gonna do my best to answer that question for you today. So the easy dumb answer is basically the difference between old world and new world rat snake is some are from the old world, some are from the new world, i.e. old worlds are from the old world that we categorize as the Eastern Hemisphere, mostly referring to, to Asia and Africa. New world is the Western Hemisphere, the Americas, North and South America, Central America. For whatever reason, European rat snakes get left out, and I don't understand why, considering there's a little bit of overlap as far as range goes. In addition, some of those species are absolutely amazing, like the four-line rats and the ladder rat snakes, they're really, really cool. And they're also on the short list of getting a few more of the fun colubrids that may or may not happen this year, we'll see. And then the more accurate and probably more correct answer is that it, a lot of it has to do with taxonomy and classification. So as Western scientists and biologists way back in the 1700s and 1800s were starting to categorize all the different animals around the world, a lot of the rat snakes ended up in the genus Elaphae. Basically every single rat snake was Elaphae. And as they began to expand their reaches and as they began to learn more about rat snakes, learning that there was more about them, that they had similarities both with DNA and mitochondrial as well as more than just their range that had to do with physical differences and geographic location all that, other species and genres started to be added to that to try to better categorize them and our understanding of them. So for instance, like this eastern fox snake here, or as I like to call them, the Great Lakes rat snake, belongs to the genus Panthropus, which belongs to basically most of the rat snakes that are found in North America. And even in Panthropus, there's quite a bit of difference physically. So for instance, the fox snake, or the Great Lakes rat snake here, actually kind of looks like a crazy combination of both a pituophis or a bull snake and a corn snake. They have more keeled scales, they have a fairly calm disposition, and they act like a rat snake, but are a little bit larger and sturdier like a bull snake. It's kind of weird. They have the corn snakes that everybody knows about. Then there's also, you know, the black rats and the western rats that are significantly larger than those, or the gray rats that have an incredibly wide range in all sorts of different color variations and come in different sizes. And there's other North American rat snakes that don't even belong to Pantheropus. For instance, the Transpecos rat snakes, which belongs to the genus Subocularis, which refers to a large scale that they have under their eyes. Sub, under, ocularis, eye. Meh, meh, meh. Then there's also, you know, the yellow red or the night rat snake, where they belong to the genus Pseudolaphae, which if you try to translate that over to Latin, it means similar, not quite, or faux, Elaphae. So they seem to have more in common with Elaphae than they do some of the other genuses and the other species belonging to Pantheropus here. And they do kind of look like that, not counting their incredibly large eye because they're very nocturnal species. But if you look at kind of their head structure and the length of their tail in comparison to a lot of the tail length of a lot of the other North American rat snakes, they do should have a little bit more in common with those Elaphae snakes. In addition to that, there's other ones that are barely even what I would consider rat snakes, like the Spilotes or the tiger rat snakes or the Amazon puffing snakes, where they seem to have more in common with animals like Musaranas and Kribos and Indigos and Dry Marcon species. But that's neither here nor there. And so, as now that we've kind of wrapped up the New World ones, let's talk a little bit more about the Old World rat snakes. I'm just going to keep him out because I don't get to show off the Great Lakes rat snake a whole lot. Ha ha ha. So, the Old World rat snakes. That basically is referring to, in the most part, when we talk about old world rat snakes, we're really referring to most of the snakes that come from Southeast Asia. Although that does include other ones that reach over, like the trinket snake that comes from parts of India and Pakistan and has a wide ranging range as well. And there is a quite a bit of differences in variety when it comes to even just them. So the trinket snakes belong to Elaphe. So do the Japanese rat snakes, which are all the way over in the island of Japan, a little bit different. They're usually a little bit more mellow compared to the trinket snakes or even the beauty snakes, which are also Elaphe, which everyone knows about the uh, amazing beauty snakes, right? Well, there's also the rhino rat snakes and the Asian red-tailed rat snakes. Those belong to the genus Goniosoma. And the rhino rats are the only ones that have that really long nose appendage, but are still in the same family as the Asian red tails, the reins. Those are all the Goniosoma. And then there's, heck, even the bamboo rats, which are significantly smaller, the largest of which rarely get over four feet long and are very fossorial. In fact, keeping them in the hobby, most of the time you have a really nice, decorated, humid, cool tank because you don't see them a whole lot when they're actually comfortable and feeling just fine. A lot of it really just has to do with kind of taxon taxonomy and classification, but there's just a wide ranging 
amount of differences between them, from the largest of which, like the Pataeus, which we call the Indian rat snake. They're very large, the Pataeus carinata. They're huge, they can get over 12 feet long. The smallest of the rat snakes, like the bamboo rats of the old world, will sometimes stay under two feet long. And then in the new world, we have Spilotes that are incredibly long, over eight, nine feet. And then the smallest ones, like the green rats and um, the Pseudolaphae, which usually stay under three or four feet. So it's just a very interesting, it basically just has to do with the fact that rat snakes are an incredibly large and diverse group of snakes. And in fact, they are one of the larger and more diverse groups of colubrid snakes, which as we all know, colubrids are just kind of the catch-all for everything that isn't a boid or a venomous species. And there probably needs to be talk about having a better breakdown classification of those colubrid snakes. Maybe having any of the actual rear fanged ones be classified as their own type of thing. But that's neither here nor there. That's just my opinion and me just kind of spouting off about it. So, in conclusion, to really sum up and answer the question, it mostly has to do with geographic location, and then when it gets broken down into the different genres or the different genuses, mostly referring to Pantheropus and their adjoiners over in the Americas, like Spilotes and Pseudolaphae, Suboculares, and then over in Asia, it's mostly Elaphae, and then their adjoiners like Goniosoma and the Bamboo Rats, which I always butcher their names, so like always, we had their... Uh, Latin names up as we went along. Hopefully that answered your question and it gave me an excuse to just kind of talk about a really cool group of snakes as well as just show a bunch, show off a bunch of really cool, not only video of my own snakes, but a bunch of just really cool snakes in general. So again, hopefully you enjoyed that answer. Hopefully it gave you the answer you were looking for. Sorry, it took a little bit long to respond to you. I didn't just reply to the comment. I wanted to actually give a video response. I'll be looking forward to doing a little bit more reptile content for you guys. I have a few really good ideas lined up. Um, to my original idea for this year of trying to work with other people is going a little bit more bumpy than I was really hoping for. Uh, but we've had some really fun experiences this year so far, and I greatly look forward to uh, working a little bit more on the... Uh, you might actually, hopefully, we'll see how it goes, because there's a lot of bumps in the road. Instead of my ideas of doing a lot of other people around Colorado and other people around the country, um, you may get a little bit more of kind of a behind the scenes thing as I'm gonna be hopefully, instead of adding a lot of species of snakes and more individuals this year, I'm gonna hopefully be trying to work on a little bit of infrastructure as well. So um, my plans are continuously changing just like all adulthood plans go. But hopefully you guys did again, enjoy today's video. Look forward to reptile content, other creator collabs, as well as maybe some behind the scenes uh, kind of infrastructure building up plans as well. Um, you can find me on all the other social medias. We all know at the time this is coming out, we don't know what's going to be happening with TikTok, but I'm actually starting to post a little bit more on there. So we'll see about that. But if you enjoyed that kind of short content, I am putting out the shorts. A short series about all of the different species of reptiles from the different 50 states. If you like that content, if there's any other type of short stuff you'd like to see me talk about, let me know down below. And as always, hope you're having a great day and we'll check you next time.